What's going on, guys? Riggs here. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the very next episode of the How to Play Like a Pro series. And unlike all of the other people that we have featured from start to finish, check out the playlist. I'll definitely leave that down in the description. But from Athena to Xfate to Clazy to Adexis to Shaw Beer, number one in Asia squads. For the very first time ever, we are actually going to be featuring somebody who is unlike anybody else that is on this list. And the reason I say that is because the player we're going to be featuring is a thumb-only player. They do not play, they do not play claw, they do not use gyro. This is somebody that is very that can be very much relatable because as we all know at the end of the day the majority of people that are playing uh this game are playing with their thumbs they're playing straight up two thumbs that is it no index fingers no controllers no emulators nothing like that and so this is gonna be someone that you might that you could actually not only look up to but know what is possible or what can be achieved just by playing with your thumbs. You don't need um, anything else but that. Without a doubt, very, very inspiring. And wait till you guys hear what he has said. And for those of you that don't know, the person we're talking about, his name is Calm. He was originally from the clan uh, X, which is actually from the same clan from X Fate, uh, but has since moved on to 8DP. And they're all over the leaderboards from duos and squads. Uh, all over the leaderboards in North America, uh, in top in top 100, and Calm himself is currently, as I'm making this video here in season nine, he's actually ranked in the top 10 in NA squads. And I asked him a bunch of juicy questions, and I'm very very excited to share this with you and hear what he has to say. I think the majority of you watching this are going with without a doubt are going to benefit by what. Um, information what knowledge he has to share with all of you guys so we'll go ahead and start off with some of the basic questions i asked him how long has he been playing a pub g his response was the day it was released on mobile it says he didn't play in season three or four because it was hunting season um, but he picked it right back up in season five and he's been playing every day since then so he's been playing the game for a while I then asked him, what's your favorite loadout and why? His response, my favorite loadout is the M4 G36, um, is an acceptable replacement on McKinney and AKM or M M762 or Uzi. I'll trade the Uzi or AKM for Groza if I happen to come across it during a match, i.e. like from a crate or if you kill someone that has it. And depending on the zone shifts, I may switch that AKM or Uzi for a sniper if it's, it's, if it's a zone I won't be pushing because lack of cover. So, unlike a lot of the other people that we have featured on the channel so far, a lot of people have a go-to straight up, this is the loadout I like. As you guys see, Calm's loadouts are very much situational. He's talking about zones, he's talking about whether there's gonna be cover, if he's gonna be, um, if he's going to be doing long distance snipes, if he's going to be doing more, um, you know, close quarter combat. So what he's carrying is really has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, just one thing that I noticed compared to a lot of the other people that we have featured on the channel so far. Then I asked him, what's your favorite scopes for this loadout and why? His response, the accessories I like on my M4 are a compensator, vert or angle, talking about the foregrips, 3x or 6x dialed down to a 3 but i always carry a red dot for that up close combat in the final zones or for when shooting out of moving vehicles if i don't have a red dot then iron sights for those final circle uh close encounters i enjoy the 3x because it's not too much zoom or too little it's just the perfect amount for close mid and most long range shootings i could not agree with him more as you guys see on just a lot of my own videos always rocking the 3x Without a doubt, my uh, favorite scope. Uh, so I thought it was kind of cool that uh, he, you know, he had mentioned that. So for the AKM, he switches up a little bit. He says for the AKM, he actually prefers a suppressor on an AKM and or the M762, especially for the reason when I get a Groza, I already have the suppressor. 200 IQ plays here, guys. Pay attention. Play close attention. And he says, uh, for scopes, a red dot or 2x. 2x on Groza equals no recoil. Very interesting. Uh, he all, and then, um, 
Oh, then I went ahead and asked him, uh, what's your highest kill slash damage in a single match? He says, season six, he had 30 kills with 3,828 damage, and he did that on Miramar, which transitions into the next question, which is what is um, 8DP Calm's favorite map? His response is, he says, my favorite map is Miramar, uh, but close second is Vikindi. I love Miramar. He says, I can tell you where ridges are located, where to rotate without even looking at the map. I know it so well. I used to get more kills uh, on that map up until this season, which is because more people switched to playing Vikindi. Um, then, he goes on, then he goes on to say, I just enjoy how much easier it is to locate and see people on Miramar. Uh, the brightness of the map, uh, the contour of it. Uh, but now, a lot, of, a lot of top talent is on Vikindi this season compared to the last four. Uh, most of the talent played on Mir uh, when before most of the uh, talent was played on Miramar. That's the reason McKinney being a very close second for me. Um, then I asked him this, like I already had kind of alluded in the very beginning, how he's a thumb player, straight up, two thumbs, bam, in your face. So then I asked him this question, right? I says, "Will you ever switch to Claw?" Check this out. He says, probably not. I enjoy being known as one of the top players that plays thumbs only. I've tried it a few times. Um, it would. Uh, he says, I tried it a few times. It would be cool, but I don't want to reprogram my hands to push buttons in different locations. Then I said, for those of you that are watching this that are thumb players, uh, again, something that you can look up to or aspire to be, I asked him this. I said, what tips do you have for other thumb players as it's still the most common? Anything you'd recommend for others to improve? He says, if, I have a, if, you, have a pro, if you have a problem with button layout, only move one button at a time and test it. Don't be constantly moving around your buttons because it's, it'll cause more trouble in the long run. Once you find a spot for a button that you're fast and good with, leave it. So... So we already talked about the hub. So this is going to be talking, now he's going to be talking about sensitivity. He says, perfect your sensitivity settings. Being thumb players, we have less fingers to control recoil, to flick and keep on target and so forth. Perfecting the sensitivity for your play style is super important. I know how far I have to swipe to flick certain distances and it's not too fast or too slow. Then he says, keep at it. I'm fast with my thumbs, but you can be just as fast or faster uh, with due time and plenty of game time. You got to get those games on your belt. Practice, practice, practice. Um, so that was his, his, his last thing is, like I said, get those games in. Uh, next question uh, that I asked him, I says, usually you're top 10 every season in squads and you're even known for playing with random sometimes. Uh, which is true. This dude plays not only solo V squads in Conquer, but just for fun, he'll he'll just match with random people. It's something he's almost known for in the community. Then it says, do you, uh, do you match with randoms for the challenge? What's the key to play at your level, even, it's with, even if it's with people you've never played with before? His response, I do it for the challenge. It has helped to make me a better player. It also helps the people who match randomly have a good teammate for once rather than the type of teammates that wanders off or jumps alone. And the key to playing with people I've never played with at my level of gameplay is just play normal. Be a little more passive aggressive. If you're normally super aggressive, wait for the enemy uh, to make the first mistake on a push and then capitalize as quickly as you can. I know it's bad to say, but when playing with randoms, you can always save them. I know that you don't want to lose teammates but if you're continue but if you're continually making the same mistake you can't make the move or put yourself in jeopardy to constantly get the revive try your best though and i said lastly uh which is your guys's favorite part uh in this series which is what are your top five tips for someone to improve their gameplay this can be anything um these are the top five tips or strategies you live by he says use smokes tactically and for cover you think you're going to be shot in the back while trying to snipe someone drop a smoke you think an enemy might be rotating drop some smoke uh, a little away from them to draw their attention away from you and rotate opposite way when trying to push a compound or rotate on people snaking or at walls Throw the smoke in front of them rather than in a path because shooting the path will be easier than trying to find your way through one long wall of smoke. But if you must smoke a path, make it wide. I generally carry 10 plus smokes in every match. My auto pickup is set to the max, which is 20. 20, you guys. 
Um, then he says, I use grenades and forget the mollies. Unless the player is in a tiny room, people uh, can get away from mollies. Basically, a way to save that backpack space. If you have time to grenade perfectly and toss it right on someone, they can escape. You can also bounce grenades off things to get in the spot you wouldn't normally be able to. Um, they're far more superior. Also understand, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he's like number 50 or number 55 grenadier in all of North America or in the United States because uh, the ranks are based off of your flag. So in the United States, he's currently, I want to say he's um, in top 50. So listen closely, you guys. All right. Next tip, uh, when pushing people you see in the open or in cover, make sure you find cover for yourself first. Um, he says, so he's going to give an example. So say you're driving up to a set of compounds and there's people outside of it uh, and inside of one building. Push the building they're not in. At least two people go inside the empty building while two stay out uh, if you're trying to get a knock before rushing. Always push cover before being too exposed is what I always say. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you watch me when we pull up to a compound, the first thing I do is push the compound and get out of the open, preventing the easy third-party knock uh, from enemies that you might not be able to see. Third tip, when finding a squad, don't always thirst if they're close by. Kill the whole squad off. Don't get yourself killed while you're caught thirsting the enemy. Also something that we've talked about on the channel. That is my biggest pet peeve uh, when my teammates get knocked um, trying to thirst. If they're alone or completely wide in the open, by all means thirst. But if there's multiple around and close by, knock and rotate and keep fighting the ones that are still standing. These are rules to live by, you guys. Literally, um, yeah. I mean, could not. I mean, could not have said it better. Um, absolutely love that. Absolutely love that tip. Okay, next one. Uh, next tip. Leaning with every shot reduces recoil. I lean for every single shot I take, whether it be crouched or standing. But lay, but laying prone is the ultimate recoil reducer. But the minute you get shot while being prone, get up and move to cover. Don't let yourself get knocked because you're trying to have no recoil. Crouching and leaning reduces the recoil tremendously. It also is faster to get up and move from shots than being prone. That's actually something I did not know. I didn't know that when you, basically he's talking about when you're doing like a lean and peak, that that reduces recoil. I'm going to have to test that out myself. I did not know that. So that's very, very interesting. And we've actually seen him do that. Uh, on the gameplay that you guys are watching on the screen. He says, listening is key. I generally hear enemies before I see them. Um, so those were his five tips right there. Basically, really pay attention to that sound. Um, so last thing I wanted to kind of wrap it up with, again, I really wanted to highlight the fact that he is a thumb player. Um, so I wanted to ask him this. I said, also, do you think you're at a disadvantage only playing thumbs? Uh, explain either way, whether it was the answer to his question was yes or no, explain. He says, I absolutely think I'm at a disadvantage only playing thumbs. Um, he says, I get turned on quickly because by, uh, I get turned on quickly by the claw players sometimes and it gets me killed. They have the ability to move, aim and shoot all in one, all in one motion, able to do it uh, super quickly as it takes just a little bit longer for me to do that because of being thumbs. Also sniping for a call pl for claw players is much quicker than a thumbs player for the same reason. A lot of the gun battles I lose are because I'm not playing claw and couldn't turn fast enough uh, to shoot someone or couldn't get away fast enough for the shots because I had to pick up one thumb to do another action. By the uh, by far, claw players have an advantage, but I know 100% how good I am with my thumbs and how fast I now am, going back to the practice, practice, practice. But it's not. Uh, but he says it's not that big of a disadvantage unless they're stupid fast and then you're not going to win that fight unless you outsmart them. Um, so like I said, guys, I was really, really excited. I've been trying to get calm on the channel for quite some time. We've been going back and forth, uh, schedule conflicts and things like that. I know you guys have been asking you know, for some of the, you know, 500, six, 700,000, you know, big time YouTubers to come onto the channel. But what's special about Calm, uh, who's now part of 8DP, what's special about him, guys, is he's a straight up 
thumbs player. A lot of the times you guys will see people playing. Oh, and of course, not to mention, he plays on phone. I completely forgot to mention that beginning, but you guys can see on the gameplay as well. You can probably tell when someone's on an iPad versus a phone. So it's 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 motivation for so many of you out there who are just playing thumbs, who think that, you know, uh, oh, I, I can't do this because I'm a thumbs player, or I can't do this because I don't have an iPad. Dude plays on a phone, he plays thumbs, and he doesn't have gyro, but yet he's making it in top 10 or top 15 every single season literally playing with the best he's averaging about a 15 16 kd in conquer and the fact that he also matches with randoms he will go solo squad just for fun in conquer this guy is a freaking animal i really hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay on the screen let me know what you think of uh calm down in the comment section again guys two thumbs insane two freaking thumbs so anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Of course, let me know down in the comment section who you'd like to see featured next on the Play Like a Pro series. And of course, I have all the links to Calm down in the description. So make sure you guys follow him. Uh, and of course, you gotta sub to his channel and check out some of his live streams. But until the next video, you guys, this has been Riggs from Riggs Gaming.